Previously on 13 Sentinels, Aegis Rim. You're gonna find this story pretty funny, but this guy hired someone and paid him $200,000 to assassinate his wife. This guy subcontracted the job to someone else for $150,000. That person subcontracted it to someone else for $80,000. That person subcontracted it to someone else for $40,000. Someone else subcontracted that to someone else for $20,000. Someone else subcontracted that to someone else for $10,000. And then someone else subcontracted that to subcontracted that to someone for two thousand dollars the person that was about to attempt the assassination for two thousand dollars was caught by the police he snitched on the person that paid him that person snitched on the other person who 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 eventually snitched on the other person who snitched on the husband that originally made the payment <laughs> that's basically corporate in a nutshell so Hutchin was making like crab, uh, meat, rice, sushi thing, but she had like salty seaweed snack. And she gave me a bite. And so I had a bite of it. I was like, oh, that's good. And then we we're talking a little bit and my stomach growled. And she's like, oh, you're hungry. And I'm like, yeah, you just broke my fast with a bite of food at 1 p.m. Of course my stomach's gonna growl. Had you given me nothing, I would have been fine. But now, you know, you gotta accept responsibility and make me some food. So, <laughs> she's making me some food. <laughs> accept responsibility, Hachan. <laughs> accept responsibility. <laughs> you don't just give me a bite and now I'm hungry. After Keitaro Minura heard Renya Gota mention Ace Gahara's name, he recalled the time in 1944 when he met a suspected spy. Yes. I need to know. I must know. Chihiro. Okay. See Minami at the shrine to 1945. To protect, Keitaro Minura returned to 1945 to learn from a dying Tamao Kurabe that Shihiro was abducted, which was the final message before she disappeared. But Shihiro's a robot, isn't she? Jesus. So flashback, shift with the Sentinel, shopping district, Amiguchi's house, Japan 40 years later. He woke up to find himself in Japan. Then we had the girl heading to the high school, going to the Kurabe house. She ended up getting him a place to live. Kurabe house restoration. Found out that it was restored. Keitaro Miura reunited with Natsuno Minami when we first met in 1945 and ended up staying at the Kurabe house at her suggestion. So he met her in the past and now she's staying at his house. Okay, this relationship is definitely developing and transcending time and space. The factory was 1945. That's the wood one in the high school, old school building. See Minami at the athletics building. Private conversation in the wooden school building. Where do we come from? The scout unit Natsuno Minami calls BJ showed Keitaro Miura a log from 2188. The footage stated that Yuki Takamiya is her mother. So those logs that we are seeing is from the OG timeline in 2188, which we can't access because these are alternate worlds. Gotcha. Well, alternate timelines or whatever. Grr. Natsuno Minami Sakura High School goes see Minami to the shrine 1945. Keitaro Minura returned to 1945 to learn from a dying Tamao Kurabe that Chihiro was abducted. Let me double check if I see the image. That will actually help me. I remember that. You're a lunatic who just did that. Wow, that's really early on. The mark on the pillar discovers a large mark. The cause of this was Chihiro hit the laundry bucket against it while trying to... chosen to become pilots she's an AI boy meets girl that all happens Keitao Miura and the others run away from the strange looking American leaving Chihiro who's the little girl and Natsuno Minami to Tamao Kurabe Tamao Kurabe is the android thank you Hachan for giving me the food you're the best see she took responsibility and she brought me the food delicious thank you Sentinel-19. Getting into Sentinel-19, Kentaro Murillo takes on the new American weapons. Is going into a suicidal battle, then it gets teleported. 
Gets out of the Sentinel instead of being surrounded by houses burning in flames. He sees skyscrapers. Then he's stuck here. Shopping district. And loses consciousness after being struck by a student's bag. He wakes up here. He's checking out the future and the music and all that stuff. Then he's searching for clues to get back to his time. He finds Natsuno at the front of the gate. Take him to the Karabe house. He goes to the Karabe house where he starts lodging. He joins them for dinner. His stomach is growling. Visage of my sister. He ends up bumping into Chihiro. Where she's with the uh, Go... Go... To? Go... Ta? I suck with names. He thinks it's his sister. But they walk away as I recall it. He goes to the athletics building. They meet up together. BJ shows him the important log. Then he's back at the building. He visits the athletic building, questioning why a person of this era showed up in 1945. He's not able to find her, but he's asked about his relation to other members of the track team. They end up to the shrine. Chihiro is safe in his own time, but the shift also witnessed by someone else. Kitaro arrives at the shrine and witnesses the moment Natsuno comes. They shift. Kitaro Minoru returns to 1945 with the others and they leave the shrine to search for Chihiro. Company take their way to Kurabe residence. Unnerved by the fact that not a single person is around, they find Tomao Kurabe on the ground, weakened and near death. She tells Miura that Chihiro was taken by Renya Gota. Tamao. Tamao Kurabe. That's the android girl. Wait, if she's old. Nineteen forty-five exhausts herself in the burning ruins. One smile hears from that her parents aren't her real ones, and that she was brought here from the future. She can't help but sense it's the truth. Or maybe there's another android. Man, this is messing with me. Finding Goto goes to the high school, ends up finding Chihiro. Shamaguchi happened upon Keitaro Miura in the passageway. Tells Miura about the dream he had. Unit thirty. Oh. This was like the beginning. This one is the fucking beginning. The first time you play J Juro. He meets Keitaro Miura at the shopping district and touches his forehead, which activates Sentinel 13. Damn, this was like week one. Kota Shiba meddles with Kuraba's memories after saying something meaningful as if nothing happened. Keitaro Miura, witch. Jesus, this is weeks ago. I can't tell Miura. After Ketara Miura finishes eating, Megumi talks about the scar on his head. She then remembers the day she shot him with a magical gun. So she's the one that gave him the nano machines. One night, Megumi uses the magical gun to shoot Ketara Miura, who's also staying at the Kurabe house. Fluffy says that someone has performed a procedure on Miura that makes him forcibly, him forcibly use magic. That's the nano machines, the little, ma uh, the little mastermind. Following the boy and the girl into Karabe house, Ace Gigahara tries to shoot the stranger girl, but Jura Karabe takes the shot instead. Afterward, a cat sitting on the TV appears to be the brains behind it all. He talks to Seki Gahara, Ketara Miura hits him. Seki Gahara recalls a memory of Miura. Okay! Yep, literally the first story you play. <laughs> and now we're here. Dude! The lights in this era stay on at night. Don't need to carry a lantern around. Yeah. Global warming. No point in trying to make sense out of his story. And still too early to say anything for sure. But a scout unit from the future? And it possesses my consciousness? The footage he showed us is allegedly from the future. If it's real, then how am I still alive 200 years from now? <sighs> All I know for certain is that it's no ordinary scout unit. Natsuno san. <sighs> Get it together, Keitaro. She certainly is quite. Yes. I admit, she's bright, cheerful, attractive, but right now, I have more urgent matters to tend to. 
Back in 1945, everyone mysteriously vanished. But here in 1985, 40 years later, there's no historical evidence or impact from that event. It reminds me of a concept I read about in a science book. The idea of two similar parallel worlds. According to the history of this era, it has indeed been 40 years. But this era doesn't seem to be based on the era I'm from. The two aren't connected. Perhaps this isn't really time travel after all. Chihiro. She was acting like a completely different person. Design engineer? Controlling the system? What was she talking about? <sighs> Chihiro. What's happened to her? Chihiro... Morimura? She's the original Chihiro? Is there no going back to the way she used to be? <sighs> well, not time Chihiro. travel, but multiverses, definitely. Even if I do bring the Sentinel back home, how can I bring myself to fight? The ones I swore to protect are gone. Well, time to start fighting for yourself, buddy. Or Natsumi, I guess. Natsuno, sorry. Natsuno-san. I suck with names. I'm not sure why, but I really want to hear her voice right now. Could she still be at school? <laughs> oh yeah, he's hooked. <laughs> he likes uh. All that means is that, well, at least her appearance makes you believe that she's genetically compatible with you. That's how humans work. We work on sight and smell. If we like the smell of someone, we're genetically compatible. If we like the sight of someone, we think they're genetically compatible with us. We don't understand why, we just do. No point in trying to make sense out of his story. It's still too early to say anything for sure. But a scout unit from the future? And it possesses my consciousness? We'll worry about that later. For now, we're getting you laid. Come on, let's do this. Hello, Mr. Kitty Cat, who's behind this whole thing. Natsuno-san's over there. I mean, she has Yuki's genetics, so she's got a bit of Yuki in her. And I like me some Yuki. Um, and she's got Keitaro, and Keitaro strikes me as, you know... Well built, sort of can do attitude with good sort of foundation. So she's the mixture of those two. I mean, that's pretty decent. Hey, I never saw these guys. Hey! What do I do? What's the hurry? Miyurakun. BJ's gone. I'm pretty sure he's lost somewhere by himself. If he's caught, we'll never see him again. There's even been a study done that shows people in the same family usually don't like the smell of each other's body odors. It keeps them from reproducing with each other just in case they, they never met before, I guess. Well, yeah, it's genetic compatibility. And you don't want the same genetics, you want diversity. Alright. Let's split up and find him. Okay. He couldn't have gone too far. Maybe he's inside one of the school buildings. Okay, then you search the buildings. I'll search the campus perimeter. Okay, I'm on it. Thanks. <laughs> well, let's see his little Vegeta. Ah, but was the test done with some that never met or knew they were related? I'm not sure. You'd have to ask Neo Anderson. Neo Anderson? Wait a minute. I see what you did there. What you did there, I see it. Did you see that flying RC thing? It went back behind the North School building. Think it belongs to the radio club? It was all boxy and weird shaped. Didn't look like a helicopter to me. <sighs> so it can fly. Behind the North building. That's where the old school building is.
No sign of them. There's all. There's also been a study that shows that during certain times of the month, usually when a female human is ovulating, it changes their scent so that their significant other finds them more attractive. You mean like pheromones? Not sure how well that works. Family recognition without being introduced, I mean, in families like the old Egyptian pharaohs that didn't really did practice incest, they kept that would-be bride and groom apart so they would never meet before the wedding day, ever. And that she's related to me, don't fuck her instinct was never a problem. Well. They also try to perceive it as to keep the bloodline pure, not realizing that they're genetically dooming the offspring in the process. Because that's what the royal family basically did. They would marry into the family to try to merge the factions back together, not realizing, or maybe realizing and doing it anyway, that they're fucking the genetic diversity of the offspring. I mean, a lot of the royal family members are hemophiliacs. They don't stop bleeding after they get cut. Which is a really, really bad thing when you look at it through a survival point of view. Imagine living in a world as a hunter-gatherer, and if you get cut, you can't stop the bleeding. Even if it's minor. Imagine that from a survival point of view. Prior to modern medicine. Like, you would effectively be fucked the first time you cut yourself, you know? As if they knew it would taint the test, for they would know they are related. Thus the stigma of incest would make them mentally rejected. <laughs> Unless you're in a certain country where that shit's not frowned upon. I never said it worked. I said they that they either usually didn't want to reproduce with each other or simply didn't like the scent. Yeah, well these type of tests you would have to take, but it's still a very interesting fact. I mean, look at how animals sort of find someone that they want to, you know, procreate with. They rely a lot on smell. Just look at what dogs do. Sounds like rotor blades. Imagine if you got to someone too close and just cut them. Ah! Are you trying to draw attention to yourself? Natsuno-san's worried about you. Hey, Taro Miura. I've been scanning for you from overhead. Huh? What? Well, that's fortunate. I've been looking for you, too. Well, that's fortunate. I've been looking for you. Well, I'm gonna stop making any BJ jokes, so that'd just be weird. No point in trying to make sense out of his story. Is what Sekigahara said true? Are you... me? Cat's out of the bag! Oh shit! Imagine that, finding out that you're a little robot thing. <laughs> At this point, nothing I hear should surprise me anymore. No, what I mean is it's not a um, inbreeding disease. What I mean is a lot of them have it because they don't have the genetic diversity. And there's not a lot of diversity in the genetics of that family as a result of the inbreeding. There's an unusually high concentration of people with hemophilia within that family. And you just take a look at that family tree, which is pretty much public knowledge if you look up Wikipedia. And you're kind of like, hmm, so they inbred at that point and that point. Ugh. I mean, a friend of mine has hemophilia. I don't think he's a product of incest. His father was like a Russian mobster and his mum was a former model. I don't think they're related. <laughs> they look nothing like each other. <laughs> I mean, she was pretty. He was... Let's just say he knew how to get the job done. <laughs> she didn't like him for his looks. Why do you look like this? When the world was destroyed, I died. Hold on. World destroyed, that sounds like a reset. You died. And this was, instead of putting the nanomachines in a body, they just put the AI in a machine, right? I had to take your place and fight your sentinel. Ah, so you were doing it. In order to do this, I was resurrected as an AI. 
Right. Sentinel. Even if I do bring the Sentinel back home, how can I bring myself to fight? The ones I swore to protect are gone. So you've been using a Sentinel to fight off those monsters. That's what you're looking for, right? Correct. Then how did your AI end up in this scout unit? There was a malfunction in the Sentinel. So I uploaded a part of myself to this drone. However, 72% of me is still wrapped inside the Sentinel. Does Natsuno-san know that you're me? We didn't get a chance to meet in the previous world. I'm very fond of Natsuno. It's best that he doesn't know. I just had a very bad thought that I am not going to share. If you're really from the future, then you must know. But people are gonna ask. The thought that I had was... Does he have a vibrate function? Kuma, why are you a teenage boy? Like, seriously. What's going to happen? My experiences are all from past events. Past events? Time is relative. <laughs> You don't fucking say, after all this bullshit, mindfuckery, that time is... <laughs> this sort of come in handy a while ago. Even with future technology, time travel is impossible. We never travel through time. But you're Keitaro Miura from the future, right? Entity that used to be Miura before you. I located the Sentinel. I can now access all logs. I mean, I know they're saying that you can't travel through time and that they're using the multiverse to travel to another world. But they I mean, if they reset everything and they I'm gonna need a bit more. So the rest of the footage is available. Promise me. Uh -huh. Before the final invasion begins, you'll research the logs and figure out a solution. I don't know if I can make that promise. I'm kind of tempted to do battles. Shihiro Morimura's plan. Operation Aegis. Wait a minute. In the battling, we've been locking down all the things. It will lead you all down a path of destruction. Chihiro's... plan? Promise me. Why are you asking me this? So we've been locking down all the Aegis things in the battling thing. Which is kind of not what we want to do. So wh what... What do we want to do? Because... I'll be gone soon. Ah! Don't tell me that... Is all going as planned? All issues have been resolved on my end. Four sectors are ready for the final phase. The remaining one is at roughly 70%. How many of the terminals have we locked? Sectors. Their structures are similar to these colonies. So that's what I've been calling them. So we'll have five sectors then. I've chosen not to divide them based on orbital positions. Instead, I've separated them by historical eras. I've been meaning to ask, why don't we create a residential district of the present day? The decision was made to start over. From a time before the world took such a terrible turn. Before the nanomachine incidents? Perhaps humanity tasted the fruit of knowledge too early. When it was being decided how far we should go back, we couldn't come to an agreement. So we ultimately settled on preparing residential districts by era. I've always wanted to live in the 20th century before the war. So this 
works out perfectly. However, some resources of the era are quite old. Accurately reproducing them might pose a difficulty. I don't think I can do it with confidence. That's fine. As long as our civilization survives, I'll be happy. Once it's completed, just one district will be the size of a city. It'll have a bustling population of 1.2 million people. We have more residential areas than we originally planned. Miss Karabe's hands are going to be awfully full. What? I'm probably off. But my mind is like 1.2 million people per sector. Each sector the size of a city. We don't see anything outside of these cities. You created five of these sectors. You have all these people in 2188. Different people want to be in different points in time. So what, you're taking all these different people and just popping them in different sectors? I'm sure everything will be finished on time. I have to get back to work. Understood. Vijay's true identity was revealed to be Keitaro Miura from the previous world. Claiming he'll be gone soon, Vijay asked to fulfill a promise. And we have fucking destruction. Let's just seal all the ages because we're listening to the girl with the big titties. See why I always say don't listen to your penises? We're gonna end up fucking destroying the world. We're gonna see what happens when we listen to the girl with the big titties. Is there five areas by any chance? Tutorial, area one, area two. So we're remembering, we're destroying, and analysis is going through the data logs. So this is the data log that BJ was analyzing? One, two, three, four, five. So that shows which sector it's in. Fuck, look at this hopping. Look at this shit. Look at him fucking hopping. He's a fucking bunny rabbit. This one's pretty... Fuck me. Look at that. Holy shit, this one's pretty linear. Fuck, Megumi's linear as fuck. Look at this linear out. How about bad? How about bad? The linear list. This one's linear. Wait a minute. Wait. So this was in 2024. Megumi. And Tomi, 2024. So that, so the fucking start was a 2024. <laughs> this was it. I thought this was the pre. Fuck. This was so disoriented from the beginning. Jesus, this was disorientating. I thought they were like walking on their way to fucking school, and the robot comes in. But no, they were in 2024. The school was in 1985. Fuck me. And she's just chilling in 1985 now. So when did that event happen relative to her? Oh no, that's Iori. Sorry, my bad. So Iori is just chilling in 1985. And then we have Juros that was chilling in 2064. And then line one would be 2188 possibly? So you got Juro just chilling. 2064 is fucked. They only made it to 2064. Then he fucking gets pumped to 2024. Then he gets fucked because he's... Wait. So he's made to evacuate. Wait, sorry. In the office building during Jura's arrival, the Yoko calls out for a missing friend. So Jura's piloting the thing. So 
Sajura's piloting in 2064. They're basically losing. He gets ported here. Place basically goes to shit. He fights again, gets fucked, gets transported to 1985, and then they fuck up his memory, and he's basically stuck in this memory loop. For now. Fuck me! Oh my god, look at you, boy! Oh, all events. Oh, I gotcha. And then Ryoko, 2064. Wow, poor girl. Then this happens. Then she's here, 1984. Then she's looped to 2025, which is kind of fucked up as it is. So, 2064 is they're just getting their asses handed to them. 1984 is basically where they put the time migrants. 2025 is the world that's basically written off. 1985 against time migration. 2025 is basically written off. 85. Man. And she's basically 1985. So she's 1985. But watch, towards the end of her journey, she's gonna fuck this whole sector by... Making Natsuno with someone. <laughs> like, there's gonna be linear as fuck. No, wait, Natsuno's... So what the fuck's the Natsuno's go then? Where does Natsuno start? She starts in 1985. So what happened before... So she must have been somewhere and then got... A good friends. Man, so either Yuki, like, went to the... Oh, fuck, these sectors, Jesus. Oh my god. Well, that right side now makes a lot more sense. Bloody sector bullshittery. And look at Renya go. No wonder he needs a fucking diary. As Renya started working with Chihiro Moimura and the other day, analyzed data from the mainframe and discovered something revolutionary. News recordings from 2188 reporting into lost sitters and memory tampering. <laughs> oh, God. Wow. No wonder Renya is so locked. Renya's basically gonna be the one that gives us the final pieces to the puzzle. He's just hopping like a bunny rabbit. Hey Sekihara, poor guy. Then all this happens. Memory loss is like, where's the memory loss? She bumps into him. Where's the memory loss? Where's his memory loss? Here, he doesn't actually have the memory. How long have you been holding a fucking student ID for? Damn, son. Megumi just chilling when a wild robot appears. And then everything goes to shit, and you go back in time for Juro. Wait, so everything that you're fucking doing is for Juro? Damn these schoolgirls and their obsessions. So you didn't even know why you were shooting these people, you just did it to get Jura back. God damn humans sometimes. Iori, 18, uh, 1985. And the real question is, is she real? Or is she robot? <laughs> oh my god. Oh man. And then Juro is fighting. There's the loss. Oh! Oh my god. <laughs> I 
I'm definitely gonna need a debriefing stream at the end of this game. I mean, I'm picking up fragments and then there's a week break and I forget the fragments. And then you guys get annoyed who already know how the story plays out with Kuma forgetting key points. But it just is what it is. Because that's what happens when someone's part-time. They can't just play every day. Like it or not, they just can't. So I'm gonna need a debrief. And then it's all just gonna start clicking. Getting the feeling you don't- you won't understand even after you're done with the game. It's... It really depends what they tell me. It really de it- I mean... It, it is honestly gonna depend on what they tell me, how much I understand. I mean, some things I can understand, some things I don't understand, there's all- It's all these variables. Final battle begins, Jurokuraba witnesses Iori enters Sentinel-15. Man. There's a lot of variables. Without a doubt, there's a lot of variables in this story. It just comes down to... How well... I can string it together, and... I mean... If I was thinking about this from a... Uh, computer point of view, I would need to have a lot of things in my RAM. And if I'm thinking of the RAM as being short-term memory, I would need to be brought up to speed and get all the pieces to the puzzle, and then I'd probably be able to put it together. What's happening is I'm playing one week, getting all these new pieces, and because I'm playing one week at a time, I, I you know, I, I forget things. So I'm leaning on this analysis thing to try to remember what I learned last time. But because it's not linear, it adds to the difficulty. If this was a linear story, like so many stories, it would be easier to, you know, keep up with it. But because it's not linear, and there's multiple, you know, variables of different people, and they're not linear either, you can't hold it against me that I forget certain things. <laughs> they don't exactly make it easy. Alright? You could do the 10-hour stream after finishing this game, I understand the story. Well, that will probably happen. But you can't blame me for it, you know? It's... It's a big one. It's like the meme where you just string together all, 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 all the colored strings. Now, I want to play more, but I have to play Danganronpa S. I need to get it ready for launch day so I can release videos for launch day. So, we're gonna call it here because if I play any longer, I'm gonna be too tired to play any Danganronpa S. It's just been sitting with me for a week. I haven't even claimed the code yet. So I gotta download that. I'm probably gonna take a nap, take a shower, refresh myself and start playing Danganronpa S tonight because I know you guys are gonna wanna find out on launch day whether or not it's worth buying. And I just have to bite the bullet and see what the drop rates are, see what the chances of getting, you know, I just, I just have to do it. I just have to play it, have to see what it's like, and I have to just have it ready for you guys when the game launches so I can just tell you, look, here's what it is. <laughs> this is what it's gonna be like. <laughs> Without microtransactions, it's like this. With microtransactions, it's like that. You know, it, it, yeah. Well, last time we were doing eight-hour streams, man. We're doing eight-hour streams. I mean, the only, like, I'm, I'm just thinking logically. I've got this weekend. Let me think logically. Let, let me think like crazy, Kuma. I gotta play that, and then I gotta edit out some stuff. Luckily, I'm on top of editing for reactions. I wanna get at least one gaming thing out. It depends. If I push myself to an insane level this weekend, and I use tonight for the gaming and smash out the gaming of Danganronpa S tonight and stay up to like 3 a.m. and order in some energy drinks. I could probably been spend Sunday after Mass Effect editing and then spend Monday while I'm working exporting and do anime Monday. And because I've edited all the Patreon stuff at least a week ahead, 
I can take a break from editing Patreon stuff. I could probably do it with a few energy drinks. I could probably... I don't do it often, but I can push myself to like 100% for a weekend and just... <laughs> Let's do just a little bit more. Let's take a little break and just do a little bit more. Let's just do a little bit more. Because if I wait till next week, it's going to take me 20-30 minutes to be brought up to speed. This has got me semi up to speed with two characters. Last wish. Alright, let's take a three minute break and we'll do a little bit more. Just a little bit more. Just so we could save the, um... Am I sure? Yeah, well, let, let's just do a little bit more. Let's just do a little bit more. <laughs> oh yeah, I forgot I was doing SMT5 last night. God. I did that stream and then I did editing after that. No wonder I can't remember what the fuck happened last night. I forgot we even played SMT5 last I don't even remember what the fuck happened last night in SMT. I just woke up in the morning. I'm like, oh, I fucking edited videos. <laughs> wow, thanks, Pass Kuma. <laughs> I think I passed out last night. <laughs> I think I literally passed out last night. And I woke up like a couple of hours later and here we are. I am honestly feeling like some of the characters in 13 Sentinels when I'm editing. Because I work like 8-9 hours. I'm, I'm, I'm working like 8 hours. I don't even have lunch breaks anymore. I just work the 8 hour. I just like soldier on. I eat lunch while I'm actually running a meeting. I like take a bite while a person's talking. And then by the time I finish chewing, I ask the other person for the report. And then I put myself on mute and I eat it. And when they give me their report, I finish the bite, had a little bit of water, ask the other person to eat the other bite. Like, I've hit maximum efficiency. <laughs> Eating at my desk. Alright, uh, let's take a little break and we'll go into the next character. Oh, man. She said something along those lines, too. She, huh? His real name is Sukasa Okino. Oh! He wears that stuff for his own reasons. That was a guy? Don't joke about that. <laughs> you just tried to confuse me. <laughs> 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 